So I'm gonna do this just as, for, I'm, I, I assume that the far majority of you have never seen Wine Library TV, so I'm going to do this as if we were doing a straight up live show of Wine Library TV. So uh, bear with the intro, it's a little over the top. <clears throat> Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can see, we are absolutely classing up the joint today because I am sharing the stage with one of the most prominent, famous, and just best all around winemakers, wineries in the world. Um, I want to, uh, Thank you for being here with me, Mark. Uh, why don't you tell the Vayner Nation and the Vaniacs out there who you are and what you do? Uh, I'm a winemaker in the Rhone Valley in France, uh, in Chateauneuf du Pape in particular, and around Chateauneuf du Pape. Uh, and I'm doing wine from the Rhone, uh, family business, uh, fifth generation from father to son. Phenomenal. Now, <laughs> here is a little sidetrack before we do this show that the Vaniacs out there, you have to understand. The first wine that I ever put into my collection was the 1989 Bocastel Chateauneuf de Pop. It achieved the Wine Spectator Wine of the Year. I was very young, that impressed me. I went out and got it from John Gellner, who we talked about before, and I still have that bottle. I'm very happy about that, and maybe you can sign it for me, if you don't mind. Sure. Nice, because I'm gonna sell it on eBay. All right. <laughs> Let's get into the first wine here. Mott, I know you're not here, Mott. You're back in, in New York, but zoom in on the label. I'm just doing it like I would do on the show, I apologize. All right, Mark, why don't you tell us what this is and the suggested retail of this wine? So this is uh, Chateauneuf du Pape white. Only about 10% of Chateauneuf du Pape is white. It's, That's right. It's uh, Chateau de Bocassel. It's vintage 07, so it's a very young wine uh, from two grapes varieties, Roussan, which is uh, one of the best grape varieties, I think, in, in, in warm climate, Agreed. and Grenache white. Grenache Blanc, right? Grenache Blanc, yeah. Now, do you use Marsan or Viognier in, in the Bocassel white ever? No, because Marsan and Viognier cannot be used in Chateauneuf, only right. in Hermitage and sure. Côte d'Iron. Yeah. So, what, um, what is your feel? You know, what I'm always passionate about and why I told you I'm coming to the Rhone to do just white wines is I think a lot of the American viewers that are watching right now, white Chateauneuf de Pops are almost non-existent. Very small part of the, the market. Really the wine nerds, you know, we all hang out in the wine cave and talk about Chateauneuf de Pop Blanc and get all excited and laugh really nerdy. But the far majority of people out there have no idea why do you think that is, and is it different within the Rhone, within France, and the rest of the world as you travel? Is the U.S. very soft on white Chateau of the Pop in comparison to the rest of the world, or is that common theme outside the Rhone Valley? Well, actually, it's true because uh, historically the whites from the Rhone have been quite uh, warm and quite heavy, and uh, in modern times, I think we have been doing much better wines. But the thing about this wine that they are fantastic with, uh, if you cook with olive oil, you know, wine is nothing without food. Sure. And these are great wines. If you have anything with olive oil, you know, we are from Provence. Provence is olive oil country, and these just go fantastically well. So if you ever cook with olive oil, think about white Chateauneuf. All right, let's get into the wine. Let's, I'd like you to give it a snippy snip right now. Oh, we will. All right, the first thing I come across on the nose, but go ahead, you can smell while I'm yapping. Um, I, I get a very interesting acacia flower uh, component popping through, exploding in my nose. Yeah, it's very true. Acacia, oni also, and a lot of tropical fruits, in my opinion, like mango. Yeah, I agree. The, the mango and the guava kind of come together like brother and sister holding hands and are really exploding on the nose. Absolutely, yeah. All right, let's give it a whirl. I always get punked by the guest. Hey Gary, you know what that just did? That just led to about 40 more emails. Hey Gary, why are you such a girl and never drink the wine, you're a jerk. <laughs> All right, the first thing that I recognize in this wine that I'm excited about is that it has a very seductive and serious level of acid on the back end. And if you know anything about wine drinkers, we all come back to one thing. We're absolutely, positively addicted to acid. Yeah, I see it is a balance of the wine. No question, and this has it in spades. Now, we're drinking this at room temperature. What is your thought on white wine at room temperature? Well, I think we should be drunk around 14 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius, uh, so. It's a tad warm. Yeah. And so we feel the alcohol come up a little, a little bit, bit more. Yeah. 
But when you evaluate wine, like myself, I always tend to like it at room temperature because at the end of the day, um, white wines are much more exposed and you actually get the flavor at room temperature, whereas we all know in the wine trade, you get it nice and cold, you can trick the poor bastard who's buying the wine into thinking it's decent. So do you use the cold wine trick sometimes? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, at the end of the day, this is gonna be a very tough episode for me because really, when I do live shows, I always hope that one wine sucks and I can pan it so everybody does see that I'm authentic. On the flip side, you gotta call a spade when it's a spade. This wine brings enormous complexity, has a rich, tropical mid palate. I get dried apricots on the back end finish, which is just gorgeous, great length, great complexity. What's the success of retail? You can go in euros, whatever. Uh, in the US, it would be around 80, 80 dollars. All right, 80 bones for a white wine in this economy is a little tough. That being said, <laughs> that being said, this wine does bring thunder. And with the complexity of the back end, and if you're serious, and especially considering it's a pretty difficult wine to get, what is the production of this wine? Oh, it's, it's tiny, it's about uh, 10,000 bottles. I mean, 10,000 bottles, I mean, Michael Harrington could afford all 10,000 of them. I mean, so the bottom line is it's very difficult to find this wine. I like this, good complexity, good backbone. I'm gonna score this wine 93 plus points, and if you're bawling like P. Diddy and you can afford it, go out and buy some of this. Let's move on. <laughs> Next, the 2006 Chateau Neuf de Pop Blanc, uh, Rouge, excuse me, Mott, zoom in, very nice. Let's give it a little rinse. Sorry, Gilmore gang, we'll be done in a minute. Um, We're drinking the wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me about this. This is obviously your classic um, Chateau Neuf de Pop. Now, for wine nerds out there, there's also a level above, the Jacques Perrin, the really difficult one, the one that I like to buy big three liter bottles of. When you come to Wine Library, I'll show you. You can sign them, eBay, that whole thing. All right, so why don't you tell them about this? Well, this is Chateau of Red. It's a blend of 13 different grapes. That's 13, guys. One, three. Uh, Chateau Neuf du Pape was the first AOC in France, uh, so it's a very historical uh, wine. And um, this is the 2006 vintage, right. um, uh, which is a very young vintage too, sure. but which is for me a very good vintage because it has a good, uh, good roundness already. You know, it's. Uh, it's, it's, it's tannic, but it has a very good run. It's a little which, bit more of a classic vintage, right? Yes, it is a classic vintage, yeah. Um, and a suggested retail on this? About the same as the wine, About yeah. the same. Um, and is this predominantly Grenache and Mouvet? Yeah, 30% each. Yeah. Got it. All right, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Sorry, guys. So, you know, lots of sour cherry coming through. I also, I also get a little bit of a burnt rubber, almost like a bike skid mark, like you're outside, like, you know, a little, little smokiness. Yeah, smokiness, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I also get a nice kind of like raspberry jam reduction sauce on the back end of the nose. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else I'm missing? Anything you pick up? Well, I get some spice also, you know, like uh, uh, pepper and this kind of spices. No. Let's give it a whirl. Sure. I can't be a punk. All right. One second. That's how it starts, you know? <laughs> yeah, this is, a, I mean, this is surprisingly drinkable for such a young wine, yet it has considerable back-end tannins, almost like dusted chocolate, like a bitter, bitter like 88% cocoa count chocolate on the back end. Yeah, it has some tannins. <laughs> you know, it's wine, it's wine which is made for aging. Uh, you know, a great bottle of Bocastel can age 25, 30 years, so you need some tannins to achieve that. No question. And at the same time, what I like with this 06 is that it's the, 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 the softness of the wine is already there. It's already, already very enjoyable. You know what I like about this wine is there's an enormous amount of floral components to this wine. I get a beautiful rose petal mid palette with almost a little lilac spread it on top. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very true. Yeah, yeah it's really quite nice. Um, at the end of the day, Vinex is a very young wine. It's drinking, it's, it's approachable. I think, I don't know how long it's been open, but obviously not too long. Obviously this is a wine that you'd wanna probably decant for four to five hours if you wanna drink it now. But at the end of the day, this really needs to last for another six to seven years when I think it's really gonna start showing its merit. It probably has the backbone and structure to last for 15 to 18 years. If you really wanna drink this, I would kinda go with like a pork loin, maybe, maybe some duck would be tremendous with this wine. What, what vintage does the 06 remind you to in some of the classic years of Bocastel? What does it remind you more of? Uh, 2000. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, you didn't think 2000 was a little hotter? I thought 2000 was a little bit more approachable. Like it was very big. This seems a little more toned down. Well, you know, every, every wine, every vintage is very specific, but sure. I think 2000 was very approachable in the like same this. way as, as this one is, yeah. Let me give it one more shot. Huge complexity in the back bend. I, I really do like this wine. You have to know your palate though. If you don't respond well to bitter tannins, then leave the room right now because this wine is loaded. A machete of tannins, if you would say. But a very solid bottle of wine. For my palate, this one rolls in at the 91, 92 point price range, uh, score range, 80 bones. Again, a big investment. But no doubt, to pop and pour like he just did and for these wines to show the way they're showing now shows nothing short of huge opportunity in the future and if you're rolling with a wine cellar, put a couple bottles away of this and I guarantee you'll enjoy it. Mark, thank you so much for being on the thank Thunder you, Show, Gary. my man. Thank you. Now, don't clap yet because he might screw this up. The tradition of the Thunder Show is that you get to ask the Vayner Nation the question of the day. It can be anything you want but it has to be a question. Fire away. Uh, do you think that uh, you bring people love wine? The question is, do you guys think that I bring people into the wine game and get them to love it? Thank you, my man. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. Wow. <laughs> wow. Go Jets. Could you do this every day? Every you do day. this every week, right? Five days right? a week. Five days a week. <laughs> I think Scoble wants some. Which one? White Scrooge, or red? Who wants alcoholic. to try some wine? <laughs> get up here, free wine. Yeah, who wants some wine? I think we'll get. We'll keep it for the for the uh, uh, Gilmore Gang. Let's Guys, let's see how the Gilmore Gang is doing. Here. Let me just jump in one Please. second. I just want to say one thing. Thank you. I've been paying attention to the vibe. There's so much amazing stuff going on in in this country specifically and in the world. Just do me two favors. Have a business model. You've got to make money. <laughs> money is oxygen. And number two, care about your community. It will go so far. Caring is so underrated right now. It is a big misstep and is by far my biggest advantage. Do what you love and care and you'll win every single time. I hope to meet you later. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, hey, thanks. <laughs>